All right, uh, well, we can just get started then. So, um, hey everybody, I'm Nick. I'm with Indivisible Illinois. I am the senior regional organizer for the state. Um, so that means I help coordinate all the groups out here. Um, here in Illinois, we are part of the Indivisible Network. Uh, we have over 6,000 groups nationwide, and we are really fighting for a number of things as we head into the election in November, from flipping the Senate, growing our majority in the House, and making sure that Donald Trump is a one-term president. Uh, we started out in 2016 with really combating the Trump agenda, uh, and now we are pushing for a number of progressive policies across Illinois and really the Midwest uh, to make sure we elect true leaders that are really fighting for our values. And so on this call tonight, uh, this is the virus-free voting Illinois call. We are largely gonna be talking about a lot of voter education work and anything we can do to increase vote by mail as we head into November. Um, on this call specifically, we have a number of local leaders. We have Marie Newman, who is the third district Democratic nominee for Congress. Uh, we have Yusuf Badal, uh, who's with the Illinois Muslim Civic Coalition, uh, as well as Cook County Young Democrats. And we have other representatives from Indivisible Illinois and the Wisconsin Democrats. Um, so quick recap on things that Indivisible is working on. We, of course, are working for vote by mail. Um, we did just roll out a very important piece where uh, we do have a vice presidential nominee now. We have Joe Biden and Kamala Harris on the ticket. We are very excited about that. Um, and another important piece with that is as we hear all the news come out about uh, Kamala Harris, which we are, we are super excited about, um, there's of course going to be a disinformation campaign by uh, the far right. And it's going to be really important to combat that misinformation and really fight for um, our values going forward. So Indivisible National has launched the Truth Brigade. It was a product of our Windivisible boot camp this weekend. And that, uh, boot, that brigade does simply that. Uh, we combat this misinformation to continue pushing for the truth. Uh, we know that in 2016, there was a lot of misinformation from uh, foreign interference. And uh, we continue to see this popping up through far right media today. Uh, so please join our Indivisible Truth Brigade. Uh, we have that going forward for the next uh, 12 weeks. It's going to be very important. Um, also, we have the Democratic National Convention next week. It runs from Monday through Thursday, and we have a week of action with that. Uh, so we'll be doing all the important pieces from making phone calls, texting, reaching voters, because we really need to uh, not only uh, fight for uh, Joe Biden, but help all of our uh, wonderful Congress people and uh, senators down ballot. Um, there's also a number of other things going on this week with the post office. Um, we are seeing the president continue to push lies and misinformation about vote by mail. Um, we still need COVID relief as we head into almost the sixth month of this pandemic here in our country with no federal leadership. Um, so there's a lot going on at Indivisible, <laughs> but uh, I don't think people are really here to hear from me anymore. So uh, I'm going to turn it to uh, a friend of mine who is from the southwest side of Chicago, uh, Marie Newman is the Democratic nominee for the third district, and uh, she won her primary back in March against Dan Lipinski, who was one of the most conservative Democrats in Congress. Uh, she's a former small business owner, she's a nonprofit leader, and a real community advocate who's spent decades fighting for gun violence prevention and economic and healthcare justice. Uh, Marie really re believes in our values at Indivisible, uh, progressive, practical policies that will uplift working families, protect the environment, and truly advance economic and racial equity. Um, so I'll turn it to Marie. Okay. Can you guys hear me now? You're good. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Great. Um, so thank you for having me and hello Indivisibles. It's so nice to see everybody. It's good to see familiar faces. So um, I thought tonight what we might do is I would give you a little update on the campaign um, and then a little bit of an update on um, what I know about the negotiations in um, DC around the next Relief Act. Um, and then I'm happy to take questions. I know Nick has a few for me. So um, update on the campaign. Uh, big news is the big update. Uh, we are kicking off our voter outreach program this Sunday with a, um, our first phone bank. We're gonna be primarily phone banking right now, as you all know, we're in a pandemic and uh, we're trying to figure out how to do digital organizing. So 
Um, we're primarily right now phone banking, um, a little bit of texting, um, and then doing some other kind of creative planning work um, where, and then I will be actually try knocking some doors too. So, um, and the way we're gonna do that is a very protocol way. Um, we're going to not ask our volunteers to um, walk and knock doors right now just because um, I don't think people are comfortable. Um, but I'm going to be knocking doors in a very protected way with other electeds in certain areas to make sure people uh, know about the importance of this election. Because right now, one of the key things we can do on the Southwest side is not only to make sure that um, Democrats are uh, elected up and down ballot, but that um, they understand the criticality of this race in, in a very personal way. And um, the only way I know how to do that is actually knock the door myself. So we're gonna be doing heavy knocking with myself and just my team. Um, so um, that's what we're doing, but we are starting phone banking on Sunday. So if you wanna go to my page, and you know, we dropped it into the chat, I think, um, the, and sign up to volunteer for now. And then from here forward, uh, starting tomorrow, you can sign up on um, the events page on, in our uh, website, which is marienewmanforcongress.com. Um, so voter outreach is the big deal. Um, the, I think the dynamics in the race are, are pretty obvious. Our Republican opponent in Will County is extremely far to the right and is a uh, Trumper in every way, supports everything that Trump does. So, you know, anti-immigration um, is a, um, definitely a trickle down guy when it comes to economics. I can't believe people still use that term, but they do. I just heard him use it the other day and I was like, well, I haven't heard that in about 10 years, that's fine. Um, so <clears throat> uh, he's that guy. We, and the one thing that I have to say to everybody is that this race is not over. I know everyone thinks, oh, Marie's got this. You know, that's when you lose elections. Um, that's when Hillary lost her race. So let's not do that. Um, I realize lots of people need Indivisible's time and everybody, but um, if you can squeeze out a few hours here and there for me, that would be super helpful. We have to make sure this is a very decisive win, up and down ballot. Uh, that's update there. So, um, gosh, I don't know where to start at the national level. Um, the two most critical things, the next uh, Relief Act, um, I guess there was some slight progress around cities and municipalities in the last few days I'm hearing from, a, from leadership in Congress, um, but not much. Um, they're not budging on the number, which is a problem because the piece that they're cutting out is uh, municipalities, counties, and states. And those are the folks that are going broke the very fastest. And that's uh, statistically correct that um, at some point, and, and we're gonna be in this position in Illinois, as you all know very soon, is that um, if the states don't get uh, the relief that they need, there's gonna be more uh, deeper cuts. And I think JB has uh, alluded to that several times. Um, so very scary stuff. Um, but if we do get it through, some of the things that are staying in the package right now are small business and um, individual workers. Um, so, you know, PPP supposedly is still on the table and will in fact be part of any act moving forward, um, some additional funding there. So um, those are the things I know uh, nationally about that. And then I know we wanted to talk about virus free voting. Um, and I got a couple of pieces on that, um, but glad to take questions. So Nick, I know you wanted to ask me a few things. Yeah, sure. A um, couple questions for you. So um, hopefully in the Southwest side and the Southwest suburbs, we're still seeing a lot of COVID cases come up. Um, Illinois is back on the rise again. Um, yeah. And many people still haven't received their stimulus checks. Businesses are still suffering. Um, yeah. so talk to people on the ground. You always talk about coalition building and working together with local leaders. Um, yeah efforts at local government or state government already uh, to really bridge that gap and get real relief to people. Yeah, there, I, I think there is some of that going on. I know that um, I've helped several um, business owners um, check in on their PPP. And then now we're also in that later stage where um, they have to figure out if they, they are for loan is forgiven or if they have to pay part of it back. And so there's this 20 page document that all of these business owners have to go through and not all of them have the time or the wherewithal to do that. So we've been helping a little bit there. Um, also coordinating with um, some of these, some of the cities and some of the uh, villages and towns right in Illinois, three actually have grants that are available to people. So we're making them aware of that because the mayors have been kind enough to reach out and say, hey, this is available, let folks know. So 
um, at the city level, even uh, not just city of Chicago, but um, you know, Oak Lawn, Lockport, all these uh, small towns have some uh, relief available to uh, small business owners. But I will tell you in our small business tour, which we're, we've done about 45 different uh, businesses now, um, I would say easily two to three of them are probably on the verge of uh, distinction. And then the rest of them are doing somewhere between okay to a little better than okay. Um, what I am seeing though, is that businesses are helping businesses. They're kind of collaborating in towns and saying, okay, I'm going to go to your restaurant. If you'll go to my little hardware store more than you typically do. And that's been really great to see all that. Um, and then even today, I'm, I'm starting this uh, first responders tour. Um, the uh, firehouses have this uh, set up where they'll uh, use different restaurants and different um, stores in town to make sure everybody gets uh, an even amount of uh, consumption. So uh, seeing good stuff, but also a lot of sadness. Yeah, um, well, that's great that people are working together um, in that. We have time for maybe one more question. Uh, so this week we're really seeing Trump attack the post office with yeah. using our good funding to it and trying to delegitimize it in a lot of ways. Even today, he's openly admitting that he's doing it because he doesn't want Democrats to vote by mail. Um, yeah. so what kind of constitutional authority does Congress have to step in here and restore the funding of the post office? Yeah, I, we've been, um, it's really interesting. So obviously, um, you know, the Congress is uh, the purse strings always, right? We have control over the budget. Um, what he can do is put these executive orders based on necessity or time of war and all these other um, emergency situations. Um, and he's using the leverage of the pandemic right now. So um, what we can do is uh, there's a few steps that can be taken. And I think these will be taken is that audit his activity attached to the executive order, um, can hold hearings and hold his feet to the fire. Um, and then we can also um, ask the inspector general to look at it as well. And those things I think will be, we'll see those happen should there be uh, more, um, uh, you know, negative activity going on. I'll tell you what I'm concerned about is that um, he's uh, this duplicitous behavior by Louis DeJoy, the uh, postmaster general, who is some donor that he picked out of the, the wild there and um, gave him the job. Um, so he's telling all of these stations to, hey, um, you only need to work seven hours and one quarter per day. Um, so whatever happens after that can just sit. And so now mail is piling up. So what I am telling everybody is kind of three things. One, the second you can get your um, application in, get it in. Um, use the designated polling boxes versus um, the mail whenever possible, because then it will be assured to get to the uh, Board of Elections. Um, and the earlier, the better on everything. I think, you know, on my campaign, we're going to be doing everything way push early in terms of uh, mailing, because um, I, I will tell you, in an abundance of caution, I want to make sure everybody's vote is heard. Yeah. Uh, so thanks, Marie. Um, we, that is pretty much all the time we have for questions tonight. But all right. anybody that wants to help the campaign, where do they go? Oh, sure. You can go to marienewmanforcongress.com. The volunteer box is up in the right-hand corner. Um, or if you want to um, come to one of our phone banks, those will be listed via Mobilize on the Events button. Um, but just mess around in there and take a look at some policy and uh, have a good time on my, on my site. But uh, we'd love to have volunteers. We desperately need them in fact because um, we're needing to kind of push this quick with a lot of volume right now. So uh, whatever anybody can do, I super appreciate everybody's help. Um, it was good to see everybody tonight. I'm going to push out, but it was good to see everybody have a good night. Yeah, thanks, Marie. All right, uh, so next up, I'm going to turn it to another friend, uh, Yusuf Vidal, who is with the Civic Coalition. Uh, so uh, Yusuf, do you just want to introduce yourself real briefly? Yeah, <clears throat> thank you so much, Nick, for having me here. Uh, I'm really excited to be part of this conversation. Um, <clears throat> as Nick mentioned, I'm currently the Director of Strategy and Organizing for the Illinois Muslim Civic Coalition. Much of like what was shared um, in terms of our focus has also been around making sure we're empowering communities with the mail-in ballot alongside with registering to vote, especially with those hard to access communities. Um, and uh, alongside with that, I also sit on, I'm a <clears throat> sitting member, um, I'm the Cook County Director for the Young Democrats of Illinois, um, with also a very similar vision and what we're doing. So thank you for having me, Nick. 
Yeah, glad to have you here. Um, so uh, we have a number of initiatives at Indivisible Illinois, um, but including a vote by mail task force with a diversity <laughs> work group. Um, so do you want to talk about uh, some of the work you're doing to reach those hard to reach communities? Sure, sure. Um, <clears throat> I'll start by um, sharing, starting with this. I think, you know, one thing, especially, you know, uh, this year is unlike any other year. Um, I mean, we're looking at a situation with COVID, which has proven to be really a huge barrier to many throughout the country, but more importantly, has further illuminated, right, on some of the inequities, specifically with some of these disenfranchised communities and communities of color. Um, and I know in Illinois specifically, um, we're looking at a state um, that has recently, the legislature has really expanded in the way which we, uh, which we do this. Um, and so, for example, the mail-in ballot has been expanded in a few ways. Um, the first being that um, uh, everybody who's voted in 2018, 2019, and in the primary in 2020 will automatically get their mail-in application um, in the mail, right? That's one thing. The other thing as well is that um, uh, the, the, the actual date to request your mail-in ballot has been extended. So what originally or historically has been August 5th is actually, it was, I think, mid-June, you would actually, you actually have access to request your mail-in ballot. <clears throat> Alongside with those um, items, you can actually now there'll be uh, municipalities will be looking to doing curbside voting. And one of the greater things here is also that election day itself will be a holiday. Um, why all those things are important is because, and I mentioned equities, because these are these are things that specifically speak to many of these communities. Election day, for example, um, being one of them. During the 2018 midterm elections, I think around 11% of black voters casted their ballot um, by mail right, compared to 23% of white voters. And so we obviously see that there's a discrepancy in who has, has access or who has been able to take advantage of some of those tools, um, which speaks to, to, to this matter um, in this upcoming election. Um, because in order to, you know, vote by mail, you have to be, uh, first one has to receive the ballot, right, um, to their address, the uh, and then they have to, they, they, they may prove challenging for people who maybe have, uh, who may not have permanent, permanent residence or maybe shifting around. Um, and so again, this is something I think is, we'll, we'll continue further dialogue and how we do this right. Um, and so, you know, we're looking at the greater Chicagoland area and we know the, the our, my work extends, uh, you know, right now in terms of the greater Chicagoland area, but we also work statewide, um, given that, you know, the numbers, um, especially um, with some of these communities are, are extremely um, high. You're looking at 22% um, Latinx community, 16% African-American. Uh, in the five collar county, uh, in the collar counties uh, alone, right? So you're talking about Cook, DuPage, and, you know, Kendall, Henry, Will, um, you're looking at, you know, close to even like a thousand, a hundred thousand Muslim, over a little bit over a thousand, a hundred thousand Muslim residents. Um, and so it's really important, right, that we make sure that folks like this are, are really empowered to be able to, one, be educated on the processes and how to take advantage so they can, like you said, hashtag vote in a virus-free um, fashion and not have to be, um, you know, exposing themselves or their families, right, to, to the virus, but at the same time be able to engage in their civic duty. Um, and so... And so our work, again, is primarily to focus on both empowering and, and by education and also making sure that folks um, have, there are steps in which they can leverage, you know, not just, uh, you know, for themselves, but also for their networks to be able to do this extremely um, well. Um, and so I think that, you know, like that's kind of like the work that we've been doing. Um, obviously, we have a certain goal um, leading up to the election. It's no secret. We're, I think, a little under 85 days <laughs> um, till there. And I think it's going to determine, it's going gonna, it's gonna to depend on all of us to kind of come collectively and make sure that we are empowering our communities in a collective fashion. Yeah, um, so... Um, another piece about you is, you, you know, you work with the Cook or the, the Young Dems of Illinois as well. Um, so when we look at young people, which is always the, you know, every demographic wants people to make sure they vote. Um, so it, with COVID, it's probably much harder, but how right. are you young people to really engage them in this upcoming election? Right. You know, it, it's funny you say that because I think uh, when you're, 
engaging with young people, I mean, <clears throat> male in ballot, just male in general, um, that's, there's definitely some generational gaps when it comes to uh, using, uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, you know, your postage and, 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 and male in general. So I think it's important to make sure that we're, again, uh, empowering our community, especially young people, to be able to take advantage of the male in ballot and what does it look like. I know in certain counties, for example, they do provide postage, which is great because it skips some of the steps and they're able to take, uh, it, it's a little bit simpler in which what they have to do to be able to, um, you know, go through the process. Um, but for young people specifically, right, I think it's really important for them um, to also understand that there's a longer term in terms of some of these repercussions um, if we don't get involved in this election. Um, you know, obviously we've seen what happened in the last four years, um, and we cannot have that happen another four years. Um, we do, there are certain issues across the board on education uh, and climate change, um, healthcare, that uh, it will will speak for generations um, to come, and so I think it's important for us to understand what 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 uh, casting our ballot means this year, uh, because um, it will have repercussions. Oh yeah, for sure. And the thing I do like about vote by mail too is it's all around your schedule. Is right a problem for me because I work all the time, <laughs> but. Uh, you know, you can put your ballot in a drop box at many locations across the state. Um, you can mail it in whenever you have it ready after a certain date. Um, and it's really around you. So it, it makes it a lot easier this time with um, the state yeah. now been signed. Yeah, and you can do it extremely simple. I mean, like, you know, for especially for young folks, um, it's you can request your application online. Um, I know there's a few links that are going to be put forth, but it, like you can go to, you can go quickly Google your 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 county clerk. Um, you can, it, it takes two minutes um, to, uh, to, to, if you're not registered to vote, register to vote. And the same uh, application, you can also, and many times, like in Cook County, for example, you can also request your mail-in ballot in the same application. Um, and then you should be expecting it, right? And then again, going through the mechanics of of just continuing to 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 do that earlier rather than later, because I know the 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 post office was mentioned earlier, and I know there there um, there is already um, they're already recommending that you know you try to get yours in earlier rather than later, um, because you want to make sure that your your ballot is casted and, and counted. Um, so. Well, like I was asking Marie, so how is there, um, or, or are there any ways we could help you in the work that you're doing with either one of the organizations? Yeah, so I think the first thing, and first and foremost, is first, uh, if you're not already registered to vote, registered to vote, you, can, you don't have to do it in person if you don't feel um, safe. Um, you can do it um, via phone, you can call them, um, you can do it online, you can do it in the mail. Um, there are a variety of ways to do that. Um, if you're already registered to vote, Great, then request your mail-in ballot um, and you can do it in the same fashion. Um, if you already done that, great, don't stop there. Uh, empower your network, get 10 of your people, um, your family, your friends, um, your acquaintances, your, your, uh, your colleagues, um, anyone in your, 10 people in your network to do the same. Uh, because uh, you know, COVID. Unfortunately, we can't be, we can't see our friends or our, or our acquaintances in person. But we've got to make sure that we're encouraging them and empowering them to take same actions as as if COVID wasn't here. So we have to. Everybody has to play their role. And then also the, to the other uh, point here that was mentioned, I think a little bit earlier, volunteer. I mean, get involved. There are so many ways to get involved. So many great organizations. I know with the Illinois Muslim Civic Coalition, with the uh, Young Democrats of Illinois, uh, with certain campaigns like Marie, for example, um, any little bit counts. So do your part. Um, and at the end, we'll all come out um, together um, uh, in, in success. All right. Well, thank you, Yusuf, for joining us tonight. And we'll uh, continue working together in the future, too. Thank you, Nick. Thank you for having me. Uh, so next up, I'm going to turn it to Rose, who's going to cover some election updates. All right. Thank you very much. And uh, Yusuf, we have to talk. So uh, I am with the Vote by Mail Task Force with Indivisible Illinois, and we do have a diversion, I'm sorry, a diversity and inclusion group that meets every Saturday at noon. If you're free, I would love to collaborate. We're walking down the same path, so I uh, would most definitely like to walk down that path together. So uh, welcome everybody, so happy to be here with all of you. It's an exciting time. We did get uh, a burst of energy with our uh, VP candidate and I, I have to tell you that uh, Kamala Harris was uh, my candidate for president, so I couldn't be more excited, thrilled and uh, the whole shebang that um, she and Biden are 
going to win in uh, November. I do have some slides for you, so uh, let me just uh, say a couple of words of introduction. So uh, I am the Indivisible 2020 coordinator. That means I have been working uh, since, really since uh, Indivisible started in 2016 on election security, voting rights, as well as winning in swing states. And uh, for us right now, and for a long time, looking at you, Heba and Ellen, that means Wisconsin. So uh, full support to our friends and neighbors that uh, have a Herculean job in Wisconsin, and um, we are there to work with you. So let me see if I can uh, fire up this deck. Helps to hit share screen. There it is. I have slow fingers. And it is launching. Can everybody see that? Yeah, you're good. Okay, wonderful. All right, so I have to start with uh, this slide. I couldn't decide which one to choose, but uh, most definitely I like the uh, phrasing in the left corner, battle for the soul of the nation. That certainly speaks to me. And uh, I was uh, really impressed with the uh, speeches yesterday and I look forward to many, many more. And I'm really looking forward to that uh, VP debate. And I think you probably are too. All right, as my friend Kelly has uh, listed on her board there, uh, right next to her, we have 82 days left. And let's keep that in mind because we've been uh, working for uh, our values for quite some time now and we're getting closer and closer and I'm feeling confident I hope you are too. So the vote by mail task force, what that means is that we are working really hard and we have been for the last uh, five months or so to um, ensure that this vote by mail expansion goes uh, forward in a uh, streamlined fashion. So um, I say it's been about five months because around about uh, March or so, if my math is right, that's when the pandemic hit. And um, most definitely before that, we were pushing for hand-marked paper ballots at polling places, sort of the same concept, but uh, we want everybody to be safe and secure. So that's why we are most definitely highlighting voting by mail. So the objective, of course, we want really strong numbers, but uh, we also want to mitigate any risks that might uh, be present if you do go to the polls. So uh, what have we been doing? We um, have not been working in a bubble. We have been working extremely closely with election authorities. By election authorities, I mean directors of election, county clerks. We are getting our um, direction, our marching orders from them, and uh, we are talking to authorities throughout the state, just not Chicago. And essentially, this is a little busy slide. Let me just uh, expedite this for you. Essentially, what they're telling us is, uh, Again, I'm gonna reiterate some of the things that Yusuf said, which makes me feel good that we're uh, going in the same direction as um, civic organizations. So um, if you have not requested your application yet, I ask you to do so. And um, also we are using social media to reach our networks. We've had a couple right now, very successful, we call them Twitter storms. If you don't know what that is, it's uh, actually a very fun Zoom call where we uh, play some music, we dance in our chairs a little bit, and we use Twitter. If you are someone that's not familiar with Twitter, no problem, we have training. And I really encourage you, I'm um, just giving you testimonials from other people that joined us, they had a lot of fun. And uh, sometimes we don't have a lot of fun in um, our uh, processes, but this is something I think you would really enjoy. So I hope you join us. We're going to do this every week, possibly until November, but for a long period of time. Our next uh, Twitter storm is going to be Wednesday at noon. There's a link. All of this is going to be in the chat for you. And the following week is going to be at 5 p.m. We're just going to alternate back and forth to meet people where they are, the daytime people and the evening people. Also, um, Illinois, actually probably most of the states, folks are transient, maybe not so much now during the pandemic, but we move around a lot. So we have been asked and tasked from the election authorities to contact ISPE. ISPE is the Illinois State Board of Elections. You can Google it and let them know. We call the uh, utilities and Netflix. We don't often know, let um, the Illinois State Board of Elections know that we have moved. So I encourage you to do that. Also, we were really excited when we had our Twitter storm yesterday. We uh, were joined by the Chicago Board of Elections, my friend Jim Allen, who is the communication director there. And um, he now is asking us to recruit 
for poll workers. As many of you know, a lot of our poll workers are in the at-risk age category, 50s, 60s, 70s. We are trying to recruit younger folks via the new law that Governor Pritzker signed in, um, I believe it was June the 16th. That poll worker can start at the age of 16. So that's new for us. So uh, please do reach out to your networks for that. A little bit of bragging rights here. We're very excited. We did trend for our, um, I think our second, this was our second tweet storm that we had uh, about a week ago. So we were not the number one hashtag in Illinois and that hashtag is uh, virus free voting Illinois. We had over 1000 tweets, which is a pretty good results and over 1 million reached. Our messaging, let me just try to consolidate all this for you for time. We want to request our online applications now. Those of us that are privileged enough to do so, there are certain communities that have limited Wi-Fi. Why do we want to do this? There are folks that have to vote at the polls. I've been um, following my uh, Twitter timeline and I'm hearing people say that they're going to go to the polls. I just ask if you have the ability to um, apply online and receive your ballot to do that. So then that way we um, have the opportunity for people with disabilities, non-English speaking people, people that just have last minute problems, give them the benefit of going to the polls because we've seen quite a few long lines. We don't want to see that again. I would like to say that I created this timeline. I did not. My friends at the Better Government Association did. And um, I think that uh, some of this gets confusing, so I hope that this chart will be uh, beneficial to you. As I said, we now for quite some period of time in Illinois have been able to request our mail-in ballot applications. Um, August 1st, this is what uh, Yusuf was referring to. August 1st was the start when um, a select group of folks did receive their applications, or at least they started going out. Uh, September 24th is when ballots are going to begin going out. So um, please make a note of that. So we look out for those ballots. As far as um, going down the continuum here, uh, October 20, October 19th, excuse me, that's the date that early voting starts for suburban Cook County. Starts a little earlier, I have to say, for people like me that vote in um, Chicago. And that date is October 14th. And there are several uh, sites that are going to open up even before that. So I just ask you to please check with your election authority. October 29th, I almost don't even wanna mention this date. That's the application deadline, last day to apply for mail-in ballot. But please, please, please don't wait that long. Let's front end this. Let's um, make sure that uh, we ease this, streamline this process for the election authorities and do start now. This is our roadmap in case you're interested, just uh, looking uh, at forward at um, what the Vote by Mail Task Force is going to be doing. And uh, we will be going through the chase process soon because oftentimes we receive those apps and ballots, we don't fill them out. I do want to do a huge shout out for secure drop boxes. I have been receiving fielding a lot of calls about concern about the post office. We have these secure drop boxes, especially in Chicago and suburban Cook. You are going to have that availability. Also curbside voting. I do want to stress though for folks that are listening throughout Illinois that this is at the discretion of your election authorities. So please do check with them as to whether or not you will have these drop boxes. I'm hoping that you will in the curbside voting. It is going to be up to your clerk. So I have been um, getting some feedback. If um, folks have any concerns, um, I will put my email in the uh, chat and do feel free to contact me. There are workarounds. I know there's some concerns about the US Postal Service, but we do have these great drop boxes. And um, also vote by mail is secure. I have fielded some concern. Our um, election authorities are doing a tremendous job making sure the uh, ballots are secure and stamped and can be tracked. So you really don't think you should worry about that. And please don't fall for the, for the false narrative of uh, fraud. Fraud in um, the country for vote by mail is very, very rare. Other questions such as, um, what if I receive my mail-in ballot and I change my mind and I'm, I am an election uh, judge? If that happens, bring your ballot with you, go to the polls, hand it into a judge, and you should be able to vote regularly. If uh, that is not the case, you don't happen to have your mail-in ballot with you, you will vote on a provisional ballot. Again, happy to field any other questions. The, I think this is my last slide. 
So um, I just want to point out that uh, it is really important to make a plan. I remember when uh, we were all able to canvas quite a bit, and I thought that this was not a necessary question. And uh, when we asked folks when we knocked on doors what their plan was, they just looked at us in amazement and we walked them through the process. So um, this is a great article, if you can see it, it's faint at the end of this chart. Uh, Steve Rosenfeld, he's a voting rights hero, and uh, he draws out a plan and very basic, as Yusuf was talking about, first is registration, second is getting one ballot, third voting and turning in the ballot, but there's a lot of helpful hints in this article. So I do ask you to take a look at that. And I was right, that's my last slide. Thanks for your attention. All right, uh, so now we're gonna turn it to the Wisconsin part of the call. And um, so I think we have both Heba and Ellen on. So um, Heba, do you wanna start and just update us on what's going on in Wisconsin? Sure, yeah, thank you all for, for having us. Um, for those who are on for the first time or who I haven't met before, uh, my name is Hiba Mohammed. I am the Digital Organizing Director for the Wisconsin Coordinated Campaign. Um, yeah, this has been a, a pretty, pretty calm week for us. Um, obviously, I'm being facetious. Um, we had a huge election on Tuesday. Um, it's been a big week. I know everyone's looking at me like, what are you talking about? Uh, it's hard for me to talk about. It's just, it's, it's been a blur. Um, we had a huge election on Tuesday. It was amazing um, in the sense of, of we really had a robust voter protection operation. All of the work that our volunteers have been doing for the last several months um, really came through and we made sure that as many people as possible were voting by mail and those who did have to go in person um, knew how to do so safely and had all of the options available to them. So I will make sure that Ellen um, touches on all of that and, and all the amazing work that they've done um, and how you can get involved. Um, looking forward, um, we have a lot coming up. Um, we have our vice presidential nominee now. Now that the primary is over, we have our full slate of down ballot Democratic candidates that we'll be supporting um, as a Democratic Party and as a coordinated campaign. Um, and we just have a lot of work to do. Um, so we have uh, a weekend of action coming up at the end of this month where we, we will be phone banking um, to voters in Wisconsin to make sure that they know how to request their ballots for November, that they know who their down ballot Democratic candidates are, and that they have all the support that they need um, to, to make sure that they are voting successfully and safely this year. Before that, and in just a few days, we are starting the Democratic National Convention um, in Milwaukee. All of our events are going to be virtual, um, but it's going to be a really neat opportunity to see some very unique Wisconsin specific programming, um, to hear from you know, huge big name surrogates, you know, former uh, President Obama, Michelle Obama, uh, Dr. Biden, uh, Kamala Harris herself, Joe Biden himself, all of these great folks are coming together to celebrate Milwaukee and this very historic event um, and the, the historic nomination of Joe Biden for the presidency. Um, so if you are interested in not only our watch parties, because there will be nightly watch parties um, that are taking place all over the country, um, we will have some specific ones in Wisconsin and you can visit our website to sign up for those, but we will also have Wisconsin specific pre-programming um, before those watch parties. So please take a look at our website. We are going to drop a link um, in the live stream chat so you can see all these specific events that we'll be having. Um, I know many of you have been invested in Wisconsin for a very long time. Um, so I think this is going to be a neat opportunity for you to hear um, from, from the, some of the folks that you've been supporting and working on behalf of. Um, so please consider signing up for those. We would love to have you for these virtual events. Um, and then of course, we'll be feeding right into the following weekend of action and making sure that voters are ready, that we are ready um, to, to request our ballots, to register to vote and to vote for Democrats come November. Um, so I will stop there and turn it over to my colleague, Ellen. Thank you, and thank you all the, for all the hard work you guys did. That was a really amazing slog getting through the August. Um, I think the point that I want to first hit is a massive thank you. Um, we were able to field infield poll watchers for our pilot um, external poll, watch, poll watcher program in this August election. We were able to collect a phenomenal amount of data, which is going to help us put together our November plan in a more organized and informed way. Um, which I'm very excited about. And I think a solid quarter of our volunteers were from Illinois. So, you know, all the, all the love. Thank you guys so much. It is greatly appreciated. And I want you to know that the data you collected for us is getting used right now. I am digging into it. I am so excited to see what we can do to really work with things safer. Um, which brings me to my second point. Um, so we heard earlier on the call how timelines have moved up this year. 
And so I think in my head a lot about sort of internal timeline I have going on. Like first we need poll workers because we need to open more polling places to allow an in-person voting option for those that choose to do so. Okay, when do I need them by? I need them by the end of September because uh, Parks across Wisconsin announced the number of polling places they're gonna open in early October. Um, so we are still moving forward with efforts and specifically now we're focusing on specific municipalities and doing more concentrated efforts to reach out to places that we know we're having trouble in order to find poll workers and get them in before this deadline so that we can open the maximum number of polling places. Second, we are following efforts to call through municipal clerks, collect information about their early vote plans, um, the information about where the drop box is. Um, the drop box is, for example, where you can leave your absentee ballot if you want to be absolutely certain it will arrive in time to be counted. And um, if you also want to not worry about the US Postal Service. Uh, so we want there to be drop boxes in every municipality in Wisconsin where voters can safely leave their ballots. We want these drop boxes to be open well in advance so voters can drop them off. And in case there's any problems with say the certification form on their ballot in time for the clerk to reach back to them to correct this. Um, we're also going to be running pilot programs uh, to try and chase down people who have submitted an absentee ballot with a bad certification to try and help them correct it. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on. And if you wanna be in the loop to be part of this, uh, the I will put the link in the chat, but it is wisdoms.org slash voter protection. Just go and sign up there and give us an idea of what you're interested in and we will get you on board. Um, a lot of our phone banking efforts, I know that people may not always be into phone banking. Ours is somewhat different because we do, we are going to be beginning to be targeting very carefully. We are not going to be blanket in people. And even to the extent that we do call a lot of people, like they tend to be friendly Democrats because we're trying to find poll workers and poll watchers to help us um, protect the vote and make the vote possible on election day. I will uh, let it go to questions. And I will put the link in the chat. Thank you. Just many people on our calls are times a week. <laughs> so I'm glad to have you here. Um, so we do have a question in the chat. Um, who would we contact, local city or county election boards for the locations of the ballot drop boxes? So I, I believe, Rose, uh, do you think you can do this question? Yes, Mary Pat and I have been communicating privately, but uh, I am willing to share. I uh, understand that uh, Mary Pat is from um, Cook County, so probably suburban Cook, right, Mary Pat? So it's my understanding, we just learned this yesterday from my uh, friend Jim McGrath, who has been in communication with suburban Cook, that there will be drop boxes at uh, all of their early voting locations. I'm not positive when those drop boxes will um, be made available. I do know for Chicago that they will be made available 20 days prior to November the 3rd, I think, but just uh, check me on this, that Suburban Cook, theirs will be available a little sooner than that. And um, again, lots of questions about security and that's uh, very fair and valid. There will be attendance, not perhaps at all the jurisdictions across Illinois, but uh, I do know in Chicago and Suburban Cook, there will be attendance at these drop boxes. And um, these attendance, by the way, will be paid. So if that's of interest, uh, to folks that, that is uh, available in this uh, tough economic period. And um, also, I just want to say a couple more things that um, they are going to be carefully monitored. The um, secure drop boxes will be locked at the end of the night. The ballots will be um, taken to a central location. There will be envelopes available. We will be checking the ballots. So I really want people to um, rest assured that the drop boxes will be a uh, solution. In, um, in case things go uh, a little further south with the post office, but hopefully they won't. All right, I will not see any other questions in the chat, so I think we will wrap up for the night. But if anybody else has questions, uh, feel free to get in touch with me. Um, I can coordinate pretty much anything with Indivisible for you. And my email is nick, that's N-I-C-K at indivisible.org, or feel free to follow us on Indivisible Illinois and get in touch with us that way. Um, but thank you, everybody, for joining tonight. Uh, we'll share a lot of the links that we talked about, and we will see you next week. Thanks, everyone.